Hey, what's up, guys? We are back again with the big purple blobs of destruction. This deck is so much fun to play because as soon as your opponent makes one slip up or mistake, they slide all the way down and lose their towers in seconds. The Elite Barbarians, coupled with the Heal Spirit, will make sure that you can make mincemeat of any push that your opponent drops. Then you throw down an Elixir Golem in front of it, have the Battle Healer healing up your entire push, while the Electro Dragon chains onto your opponent's tower and the units so they can never evade the damage. The Rage just lets you win a lot faster, so let's go jump straight at some games, destroy some opponents, assert dominance, and make everyone rage in the process. I upload daily videos on the channel, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss out. And a huge thank you to everyone that's using Critic Hood Surtag, making this channel possible. All right, so jumping into this one. Unfortunately, this guy's not spamming into me. Usually when you're running Elixir Golem, you want your opponent to make the first play, so you can defend with the Battle Healer, watch them overcommit, do no damage to your Battle Healer, whip out an Elixir Golem with your dragons, and take towers. I don't know if we're going to be able to get Elixir Colm in our starting hand, so I'm going to wait and show. Okay, thankfully we are able to actually get it. So I can go in for the Battle Healer here. We're not going to lose anything from that interaction at all. In fact, all of our units are still alive, and he went in for a Lightning. This guy is so ambitious, and his tower is going to be delicious. I love this game so much. When you have Battle Healer healing up your Elite Barbarians, and your Front of Dragon locks onto the tower, and even if they've got Archer Queen and Snowball, they're going to lose their Archer Queen, they're going to lose their tower, and they're going to lose their mind. I don't think anyone can keep their sanity after they lose a tower that fast to Elixir Golem Blobs. And the E-Barb is still alive, oh my gosh. The fact that that thing is doing enough damage to almost three crown is ridiculous. Like, we have already paved the pathway to success, and all we have to do is embark on a journey with another Elixir Golem. What I, we did the first time, basically three crowned him, took one tower, and solidified a very firm situation where all I have to do is play decently for the rest of the game. I'm going to go in for an Electro Dragon here. If I can reset the uh, Archer Queen, that would be ideal. Just don't want the Archer Queen to win that interaction too hard. If we're able to kill her, that would be awesome. I guess the Battle Healer is going to die too, so it is what it is. I did not expect him to go in for the Archer Queen ability there, though. That was weird. That was very, very funky and funky. I think if you spend that amount of elixir, you're going to take a tower. But at the same time, like, how are you going to stop an elixir golem coming at you when you're down elixir now? If this is the question that I don't think he has an answer to because I don't have an answer to it. Like, if I was in his position, I'd be looking at the elixir golem blob and I'd be like, yeah, I hate that card. I don't want to play against that anymore. <laughs> it's doing so much damage to the tower to the point that he has to snowball and the blobs are still putting in work. In fact, I think I could tornado here for just one more elixir golem blob hit and that's a three crown. No waiting around, no wasted time. That tornado blows him down like the big bad wolf. We just ate all those pigs for breakfast. Hey, so, you know, it's still winter where I'm at, but apparently this man is perpetually living in the summer. The vibes, the sunshine, it's all shining in upon him right now. But I don't think it's going to be too lucky and radiant for him when we go in for the elixir golem. It's a different type of radiant. It's varying degrees of toxicity that you've never seen in your lives. It's so much fun when the Zappies are out of cycle and you know that they're probably going to have the Goblin Cage deck. Oh, wait, he doesn't have Goblin Cage plus Royal Hogs and Royal Recruits. I totally thought that was going to be the deck, but he's going to be down a lot of Elixir. The guard isn't even going to matter. Oh, wait, is he running the deck that I thought? He just had random guards in there. I haven't seen this deck with guards in forever. Actually, never. I've never seen it. <laughs> so uh, I wonder if we can get the Electro Dragon to chain onto the Flying Machine. If that happens, we're in a really good position, and that's exactly what's happening. We reset the flying machine. We get the battle healer to tank up for the Electro Dragon for a longer period of time. So kind of how the deck works is if you keep your Electro Dragon alive with the battle healer, you can get it up close and personal to the tower, and then you perpetually get value off of it. It's one of the best cards for just keeping alive. Like it's a kind of a glass cannon that isn't necessarily the best card in the game by itself. But when you have Elixir Golem and Battle Healer and your opponent doesn't have Elixir, it can perpetually give you value because you keep stunning whatever your opponent wants to drop to finish it off. So that's one of the things, especially if you can get the tower to reset off of the Electro Dragon onto something in front of it, it's going to continuously give you value in Clash Royale. You know what? I think he subbed out the Royal Recruits and put in guards. That deck doesn't even work or make sense. I get it that they look similarly, but you know, the rare recruits are all about counter push, right? They are all about counter push split lane aggression, where the guards are a single lane unit. They do not operate at all in the same capability. It was funny to see them play them in the exact same deck. Also, I'm pretty confident that the Electro Dragon is gonna give us more value. It's gonna chain onto the flying machine. This is absurd that he's giving me that value again. Yes, sir. So I'm going to Battle Healer here and then Inferno Dragon to finish off the Flying Machine. 
only thing that's concerning for me is, do I three crown off of this? I know that I'm getting a huge push, but I want the Inferno Dragon to go behind. I think it's going to go in front, though. I think it's going to go bold. I think it's going to be cold. I think it's going to get reset. That is not the vibe that we needed out here. But maybe I can go in for multiple Battle Healers. If the Battle Healers just stay alive and we keep the Electro Dragon alive, then we could have won the game right then and there. Did not happen. He's got Golden Knight. I think the Elixir Golden Blobs do do enough damage to take the tower. And he's going to pretty much all in. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Those Elixir Golems, it's going to be so good. Because he's going to go for Golden Knight Zappies and Goblin Cage Brawler. And it's not going to give him any value in that side. You want to be dropping in the right-hand lane. The Fireball comes down and it hits my uh, Electro Dragon, which is really bad for me, by the way. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. That's not something that I wanted to happen. I can go for another Elixir Golem here. If we can keep the Double Dragons alive, even if he has a huge Elixir advantage, it doesn't necessarily matter as long as the Electro Dragon gets on the tower. And, and that's the stupid thing about this deck. You can be in a losing position and then just win the game because they can't drop enough Elixir in time to finish off your stuff. So he had great counters to me there, but I just kept dropping Elixir Golems in the pocket when we were up a marginal bit. With the Electro Dragon alive, that's all it takes to keep giving you the value and snowball the lead in your favor to eventually you win. So we are playing our match against the Master of Clash. Dude, I gotta steal your title, you know what? If we win this duel, I get your name and we're gonna put you to shame and the Elixir Golem probably will be to blame. So I'm going to go for the Elixir Golem in the back whenever you decide to go and spam me. Or I guess I can Elixir Golem at the river if you're going to do that. That's one of those things that I totally did not anticipate. Wait, we were playing E-Barbs versus E-Barbs. This is Mimi. This is Dreamy. This is extraordinarily Dreamy. The fact that he's going to lose his E-Barbs and then our E-Barbs are getting targeted means that he doesn't get any value from that. He just loses his tower instantly. Cut! That's why you can't cycle a 4 Elixir investment or a big hefty investment in the back when you play against E-Barbs. They're way too strong. My deck is way too good at punishing opponents as soon as they make one slight slip up. So yeah, we've definitely won this game. I mean, I don't see him coming back anymore. I think he just rage quit. So yeah, the game's over. We, we won the game <laughs> with the first play that we did. We went for an elixir golem as soon as we saw that he cycled the skeleton king very frivolously and capriciously at the river. He's going to try to do nothing besides throw his phone in the ocean of his tears, swallowing all of his sorrows, and maybe getting some ice cream to eat away his sadness. I don't know. I'm sorry, man. I hope that you have a much better luck in the next games that you play. That is if you didn't break your phone. Jumping into this game, the guy goes in for a hog rider. We shut it down with the Leap Barbarians. No. Business as usual. So in this particular moment, I am going to be playing aggressive. Usually you should never do this. But if we've got that moment, we've got that sauce, we got to see if we can break through and deliver the dominance. That Evarb didn't get the final hit on the Valkyrie. So now we are in a less than stellar position. I am able to activate King Tower with this Hog Rider. Presumably I don't take any damage besides the Ice Spirit hit. And we're now in an okay spot. But for that momentary trance, for that momentary dance, where the Valkyrie shut down the Leap Barbarian, I was a super sad panda. So at this point of the game, I'm just going to chill, relax, wait, and not cycle things in the left-hand side. Because that could give him rocket, fireball value, spell value on my weaker tower while hitting the Inferno Dragon. I am not about that life. I don't want to give my opponent some charity damage out here, guys. We're vibing, we're defending, and we're in a counter push and smack him right in the face. We're going to give him that knockout blow as soon as the Leap Barbarians get their gloves on and get ready to tussle with the Archer Queen. So I totally think that he's going to try to reset, but he's not going to. He's not going to be able to use the ability since the Electro Dragon just resets every single Archer Queen hit. Yo, what are you doing? The, the e barbs go back towards the Hog Rider. You're letting me build up a bigger push. Oh, no. This is actually significantly better for me. The fact that the e barb went all the way back there allows me to build up a bigger push with the Battle Healer soaking up some damage and then healing up the Leap Barbarian. So even though the Leap Barbarian takes a ton, it's still alive for a lot longer than it should have been. And then, look at this stupidity. The double heal of the Battle Healer and the Heal Spirit. Stay alive through a Valkyrie and a tower targeting it until the tower is down at under 500 hit points. That's why this deck is so broken, is if you find the right opportunities to go in, you can just make mincemeat of your opponent. You can make Parmesan spaghetti. You can make whatever you want. Gordon Ramsay will be impressed in the kitchen when the Leap Barbarians are masterfully dissecting every single thing and cutting people up like cucumbers, you know? Dice, 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 dice. It's so fun to see the Leap Barbarians do that amount of damage. Also, I think if we rage here, 
can go in for a heal spirit as well. Maybe even get the Inferno Dragon to melt the Valkyrie and then follow up with an Electro Dragon here. So one thing that I've realized is if you go for Elite Barbarians and they Hog Rider, the Hog Rider dies and it doesn't get a single hit on the tower. And then you get Counter Push afterward. Oh, that was such a good play from him, but it didn't work. Wait, that wasn't a good play for him. I thought it was a good play. <laughs> it was good. It still wasn't good. And now he's going to take a ton of damage. You know, that's the remarkable thing about the Elixir Golem deck is even when you think that your opponent played well, a lot of times they didn't. Like, a lot of times they'll just overcommit like once or twice and then they'll lose the game specifically because Electric Dragon plus Elixir Golem can do so much damage. The capability of resetting your opponent's pushes, resetting the Archer Queen is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Are you joking? How did that Archer Queen stay alive? I, I actually don't understand. I guess it doesn't matter though. The Electric Dragon is about to thrive and the Elixir Golem Blobs are doing way too much damage. So in that particular situation, I guess Archer Queen bailed him out for a way longer time than it should have. It is one of the best, if not the best card in the game right now, and we destroyed it. I still don't know how that one Archer Queen got her ability off when my Electric Dragon was right on top of it. That didn't make any sense to me. The Electric Dragon should permanently stun the Archer Queen, but maybe there was a glitch or something. All right, so getting into this one, let's go down with the Elite Barbarian. So first things first, whenever you see Goblin cycled at you, you can guess with probably 90% accuracy that either a Goblin Gang, Skeleton Army, or some other bait card is next on deck. So I want to make sure that our Leap Barbarians are healthy and well, so I'm going to go in for the Heal Spirit. The Mobile Pokemon Center. It feels phenomenal to keep your units alive. Oh, you know what? This is really, 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 really toxic, and I'm going to do it. If you go in for an Elixir Golem and a, a Battle Healer, and you completely ignore Princess, not only is this risky, but it's frisky. And I want to get the Rage down so we can retarget the Dark Goblin onto the Elixir Golem Blob. Look at how beneficial that was for me. Wow, you got to eat damage sometimes to deal damage. And he basically took out half of my tower with the Princess, so that was a risky maneuver. Elixir Golem is one of the highest risk, highest reward cards in Clash Royale, and it benefits you when you play half competently with the deck. So he rocketed, he has nothing for the Inferno Dragon that melted the Princess, and now he's down in a desolate spot with, you know, his three crown kind of eroding now. So at this point, the game is still not over because he is up a lot of Elixir. When you do a ton of damage to your opponent when you've got Elixir Golem, you can't just say that you've won the game. As much as I would like to win the game immediately, it is 100% not done until the actual game is over. So I'm going to go in for a battle here, pull back the Prince, finish off the Dark Goblin. Felt pretty good. I wonder if going in for Elixir Golem here would be a huge Elixir investment, or if it would be the right play. Because I think we'll force out a Tesla, do some damage to the Three Crown, maybe be able to put in enough work here. Yeah, actually, I'm going to go in for the Elixir Golem Rage with a Heal Spirit and try to heal up the Blobs. If we can heal up the Blobs, those things do a lot of damage. So it was just one more push like that, and I Three Crown him. He's definitely going to keep up the aggression to try to uh, take the tower in the left-hand lane. I am going to be... Pretty mindful of that and sack the tower against the prince and then go for the e-barbs to finish off the dark goblin and the other stuff on the other side the main concern for me was to lose to the prince and get three crowned and then my other concern was okay is he going to be able to take the other tower i don't really care if he takes the other tower but if he three crowns me then i can't come back in the game so that's what we're a little bit uh lackluster on the defense for not caring too much if he takes towers preserving the three crown to deal the three crown to our opponent against people that have rocket you can't stack up too much stuff so it's a, always a pretty awkward game, I'm not going to lie, that's why we're spacing out our stuff. We have two dragons on the left hand side, and that will inevitably 3 crown you with the rage coming down. You know, that, that was pretty ambitious going for the goblin barrel to take the right hand tower before you got 3 crowned. I guess he just wanted more pastorales, but we didn't give it to him. That is the definition of Elixir Golem Toxicity. Jumping into this one against Joel, we're going to see what's happening. You guys never know what your opponent's got, so you've got to give them opportunity to cycle stuff frivolously into the Barbarians. I'm going to go for Heal Spirit, and we see him probably having a P.E.K.K.A. deck. So usually against P.E.K.K.A., if you go for an Elixir Golem adventurously in single Elixir, a lot of times you're just going to straight up lose the game. So I'm not going to overcommit too much. I'm going to figure out what he's got, if he's going to go for the Ram Rider variation with Archer Queen. Likely that's going to be the case. And wait, are you serious? You've got Mega Knight variation. Okay, this is a lot better for us. We win the battle at the river pretty convincingly. I can go in for a battle healer here. So then the Mega Knight's just going to stand idly by. I wait the last opportune moment, and then I can go in for the Elixir Golem. If I can keep the Elixir Golem alive for a little bit longer... Oh, if the Electro Dragon was staying alive too, that would have been really, really good. I can Inferno Dragon here, get on top of the uh, Archer Queen, because he used the ability already. He's not going to get back to another one. The Electro Spirit's going to be able to reset. That's a little bit annoying, but not the worst thing in the world. If we can keep the Battle Healer alive, we are ready to thrive. 
That is hilarious that the Archer Queen just melted that fast and allows us the King Tower activation with the Rail Ghost. Things are really looking up in this world for us right now. The King Tower activation especially, if you guys hit that correctly, it feels phenomenal against uh, any Ram Rider push that is consequently like going to come down on you. I wonder if the Bandit wins against the Battle Healer. I really hope it doesn't. I think it did specifically because the Ram Rider was also doing damage to it. Usually, Battle Healer is going to completely outpace every single Bandit that comes at you. But now we're kind of in trying times. 949 HP in the left-hand lane. We got to make sure that we have a steadfast hold with our Electro Dragon on defense while we secure another tower with the Elixir Golem in the right-hand lane. That's exactly what we're going to go for. Start off the game strong with a early tower if possible, but if it doesn't happen, you can kind of overwhelm easily in double Elixir and then just secure a tower by spamming so much stuff into them. Usually, he'll go in for like a Mega Knight here, so I'm going to wait. I'd rather cycle cards in the air because he's not easily able to get on top of us then. And then I can Heal Spirit and then maybe even go in for a Battle Healer. Wow, I forgot that he would have Lightning with Mega Knight. Yeah, I just haven't played against Mega Knight Lightning in a while, so it is what it is. That is uh, also one of the more common variations of the deck, so that is completely and utterly my fault. Uh, I want to be able to kill the Archer Queen if possible, so I'm going to go in for Electro Dragon here. We should be able to chain on to everything. I'm definitely going to lose the tower in the left-hand lane, so there's no point in contending and trying to keep that thing alive. But if I'm able to spam another Elixir Golem in the middle in the left-hand lane or the right-hand lane, I guess it's in both lanes now. It, that, that's how I'm going to win the game. I'm just going to keep spamming Elixir Golems when I'm up Elixir, have the Electro Dragon stay alive, and because we've got the Electro Dragon, the Double Dragon still in the air, that's where you get the chip damage. Well, I guess it's not even chip anymore. You get the chain damage to secure the bag. Even if your opponent's got lightning, it is very possible to win these type of matchups. I'm going to keep up the aggression to the point that if he takes this tower, he's just going to get three crowns. So, you know what? He's going to try to defend and keep his pride and joy intact instead of his, his chances of winning the game. Is he actually still going to get three crowned? If we would one more second and he had an archer queen there and he had tried to take my tower in the right hand lane, as I told you, he would have gotten three crowned. All he can do is laugh because he did not have a good time in that one. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and have an amazing rest of your day.